Hi, I'm Kyra. And I'm Mike. And we're Advanced Group. What are we talking about today, Kyra? Uh, no parking sign within an hour. Yep. What does What is this for? Where would I need one of these? Generally, you would only use that if there's two plus bays. So two, three, four plus bays. Um, if you just had one bay, I would generally try and put the sign in, in the center of the bay. Um, if you could possibly put a pole in the center, for whatever reason, if you can't have a pole in the center, um, you could put the arrows facing each other if it's just one bay. But um, you know, in general, to save time and money, um, you'll just have one pole in the middle if it was just one bay. Yep. Is this P always black in the um, arrow with the cross in it? Yep. So uh, this is the Australian standard for no parking. Um, no parking means that uh, you could stop there uh, for up to two minutes without getting out of your car, uh, but you wouldn't be able to exit your car. Yep. So. Do I need to have no parking written on there as well? No, a lot of people like to have it, but it's not necessary. Um, in general, we try not to have any supplementary wording other than the symbol, um, and that gives the ability to put other supplementary wording in case people need to have times of the day or week or, or weekend that need to differ. Yep. yep. And what's it made out of? Uh, this sign's made out of a um, marine-grade aluminium with a hard temper. So it's not a soft aluminium, which means uh, it's not going to damage it easily if people are trying to, to uh, vandalise it. So that's what the marine means? The marine grade means it, it's, it's, it's fine for near the ocean. Um, so um, uh, you might notice a, a Coca-Cola can on the beach um, would pretty much disintegrate after a certain amount of time because the uh, elements in the marine environment are very harsh. For, for everything, including metals. Um, and so having a marine grade um, aluminium means that it's it's not going to degrade in the, in the ocean in a short amount of time. It might last 50 years um, in an ocean environment at least. Yep. And what size is this sign? Uh, this is 225 mil wide, 450 mil tall. It's That's the Australian standard for this sort of sign. Yep. Yep. And how easy is that to attach to a pole? Yeah, so there's special brackets that we sell separately. Um, now, it, it, if we show you the back, you can see there's pre-punched holes. Um, now, these holes are for the bolts to go through to hold the sign onto the pole um, it, or to the bracket on the pole. Now, um, if you wanted to install it a different way, uh, the, the holes are square. So if you needed coach bolts, you could use coach bolts to, to hold it onto either an A-frame or a cyclone wire fence. Um, or uh, the other ways people sometimes install them would be um, either a combination of double-sided tape and glue. Um, so the, you'd need to use the right adhesive, obviously, um, or there is a specialist adhesive that does set very quickly within 30 seconds. So yeah, we sell that separately, but um, yeah, you can search it on our website if you're looking for those specialist adhesives. Yep. Yep. So you touched before that this arrow is for two or more bays. If yep. it's just going over one car park, do I need anything else on it or just this sign up the top here? If it's in one bay only, mm. yeah, you would get a different sign. So the options on our website would show that you can choose either with the arrow um, left, with the arrow right, um, with a double pointing arrow. Um, if it's in a series of bays where it's a long distance or um, with no arrow. So if it was just one bay, you would choose the sign with no arrow and you would center the, the sign on a pole in the center of the bay. Yeah. Cool. And then can I just put it anywhere I want on the pole? Uh, definitely not. Um, yeah. If somebody bumps their head on this, if you mounted this at head height, um, you know, and people are very busy getting in and out of their cars, um, they could easily uh, make an abrasion or, or you know, pot potentially cut their head open. Um, and so you could uh, be liable to get sued if you uh, mounted it at the right, wrong height. So you should always follow the Australian standards or the Vic Road standards or RTA main road standards. But um, in general, you would mount this well above head height, um, especially if it's in any sort of a pedestrian thoroughfare. Um, and so, you know, the sign is nice and skinny, which is good because uh, it's less likely to get hit by somebody's head if they're getting in and out of a car. 
Uh, but just for that extra security should always be well above head height. Um, and I think we made a note in another video that um, uh, it's also good for visibility if there's something obscuring people's line of sight. Um, if this is nice and high, say for example, if there's a van parked nearby the sign, um, if they're driving along in their car, which is low down, the van's high up, they can still see the sign from a distance and not clutter up the car park with people looking at spots that aren't spots. Thanks, Mike. Is there anything else I need to know? Um, not, not, a, not a great deal. Um, there is uh, the ability to put supplementary wording on it. So um, a lot of uh, these sort of listings on our website do have the ability for you to customise this in a semi-custom fashion if you want to have times. Um, any other sort of, some people even put branding or other things. Um, uh, you can definitely put other messages down, down below. Um, you could have ex exemptions for, you know, police or emergency vehicles. Um, yeah, so there is a variety of other things that you could definitely have that you could put on, on the sign. That would be a custom thing, but it does cost extra. In what situations would I put branding? <sighs> um, good question. So say, for example, if it's a private car park, um, you know, um, and maybe the manager wanted his, him to be able to park there, um, so, uh, you could potentially say, well, it's my car park. I do what I want, I do, uh, you know, I, I want to reserve a spot for myself. Um, so you could put an exemption for their number plate or something like that. Um, so, and then, you know, they might but like hungry jacks or something like that. They might just want to have their branding on it. We've done, mm -hmm. done things like that before. Or well, the big car parks where you've got multiple different businesses and they want to reserve a spot a certain amount for yep. their customers. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the technicality, the technicalities are by law um, that um, if you're going to want to, if you need the council to be able to find somebody for parking in a spot, first you have to say what's prohibited and then you have to say what's exempted. Um, and so you can't just say this is my spot, I'm allowed here but no one else uh, because that's not a technical prohibition. Uh, so prohibition, this is a, a specifically a prohibition symbol. Uh, so wherever ever that, that's written, it's, it's like a regulation type thing which can be enforced. Um, and so um, in general, you can't just make any sign that you want however you want. Um, people will fight, fight you in the court of law to say, no, I'm not paying that fine or whatever because it didn't meet the typical standards which is regulated so um the reason why people would brand it and have an exemption and have no parking is so that they could specifically find someone they couldn't get out of it in the court of law yep Thanks. that's about it um if you want to buy this sign go to www.advancedgroup.com.au and if you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching thank you